recently you've been, your government has been accused of stifling the opposition and coming down hard on those who hold uh, different political ideology. How do you respond to such uh, criticism? I think you have to differentiate between a terrorism, destabilization, and a democratic modern process. So if you ask me to tolerate in the name of democracy those who are uh, engaging, destabilizing the country and acting as a terrorist and, and using guns to change government, then you are wrong. I have, as a responsible elected government, I have to fight to secure my people from all these kind of terrorists and all those uh, people who are engaged in armed struggle while democratic process is at home. So that has a different story. What we want to see is, uh, of course, this is a, a democratic process only for the last 20 years. It's a very you know, new and a young democracy. Uh, you know, if you take a democratic process, democracy by itself is a culture. You engage, you develop it. But we are on, on the right track. There are lots of rooms to improvement because it's a process itself. But we are committed to do so. Let's just talk about the country's anti-terror law. And you say there is a distinction between opposition and what you call terrorist elements. That law has been criticized by the international community for having a broad mandate. Uh, that's why uh, the security forces are being accused of arbitrarily detaining, example, that, opposition that's not figures. True. That's not true. What we did, you know, we know that this accusi accusation will come. So we said, let's copy from the British law. If you, if you compare the British terrorist law and that of ours, it's almost similar. But it's the implementation that is, a, is raising That's questions. something different. That's something different. We understand that while implementing it, it's an exercise. But we say that we are, it's, it's the judges who interpret the law. And I cannot criticize the judges how they interpreted the law. Now let's look specifically at the case of Gibot 7 opposition figure and Agachusege. There are growing concerns about how he was extradited into Ethiopia and his treatment. Will he get a fair trial? The concerns can come. It's not for those who are concerned we are doing this thing. It is our moral and legal obligation to do it. So Agachusege is a Trojan horse for the Eritrean government to destabilize this country. And he was sentenced not now, some years ago. In absentia, he faces the death penalty. Uh, he, in absentia, what can we do if he's not around? Is that fair trial? It's, it is fair trial because he, he is not al around there, but his you know, stooges were there who were sent to destabilize and bomb this country. They were red-handed, captured with their bombs and detonating elements. So what can you do? You bring with this evidence. He's a British national and British officials have asked, requested your government to have him get a fair trial before uh, the execution of that uh, sentence that he faces. Anybody can request, but we'll go according to the law of the land. So he will face the death penalty? I, I cannot say this now. About media freedom, your country is now being mentioned in the same breath as countries that have the highest number of journalists and opposition figures jailed. Just recently, 